Right, so we're back on the Sports Max Zone. We're heading over now to Trinidad and Tobago. Sweet, sweet TNT as we continue talking football. Well, secondary school football, football action resumed early on Wednesday in the secondary school football league, the SSFL. Sports Max's feature game saw Naparima College hosting Speyside High at Lewis Street. The combination of Brent Sancho and Colin Murray were on commentary duty and they filed this report. Thank you very much, Lance and Mariah. As the sun sets in beautiful San Fernando, Trinidad, we are here in Lewis Street Ground, Naprima College hosting Speyside High, a game that had serious implications as a race to the standing match day nine. And of course, uh, Colin, you're going to take us through the highlights of this afternoon's fixture. Yeah, very plucky display, we must say, from Speyside. We all thought that uh, Naprimo would overrun them and, and, and more or less get an easy victory. But let's look at some of the highlights of the game. And uh, in charge of the proceedings uh, was uh, referee Cecile Hines. And uh, Naprimo started on the front foot. A couple of early shots that uh, goalkeeper Richards, who was excellent in the goal for Speyside, uh, but we soon realized that Speyside was, uh, was starting to put uh, a challenge together. And uh, there was their top goal scorer, George, running onto a ball at the far post, didn't connect, and uh, the corner coming. And Joseph, who was a real threat, there is the skipper of Naprima. Uh, he's a tall young man, and he was always a threat with these balls coming across. And uh, But Speyside, never really gave up. They kept running at Naparima in the first half and that cross just wasn't good enough and the goalkeeper Romain came into his, to his own. But he was also good in the Naparima goal. Whatever they had to offer, uh, he came up big. And then an another header, this time from Naparima. They were really dangerous with the corners. Just couldn't get them on target. But uh, Speyside countering. And uh, they, they, every time they countered with a shot, a goalkeeper, Romain, was there. And he was having a really good game uh, in the upright for them. And then in the second half, the corner uh, coming from Cicheran, up went Joseph with the header. He headed it down into the net. And we kept saying that he was the danger man on these set pieces. And so it proved. But Speyside never gave up. And uh, they were taking the shots from distance. There was Bovell with a long in shot and Romain just didn't seem that he would be beaten this afternoon uh, but of course the substitute came on but Bernard, and he had the shot and it squirmed under the body of Romain he should have done better and really it was cruel luck for him because he had a really wonderful afternoon but that one went under him and so it ended up one all but Brent uh, a really um, plucky display by, by Speyside to hold on for a one-all draw. Yeah, we talked about uh, Speyside needing points and needing to move up the table. Uh, and we expected them to, of course, uh, at least compete. But that being said, it was a challenging game for Naparima College. And Speyside may come out of here feeling that they could have done better as we have a look at the stats from this afternoon's game. Yeah. Colin, 13 shots on, on goal from Naparima College, four of those on target, seven from Speyside, five of those on target. But, but look, going down the, the list there, Brent, look at possession, 50-50. Yeah. So it just so says to me that Speyside did enough here to earn themselves a draw. You know, we always talk, oh, possession doesn't really matter. But I thought they, they counter-attacked well. Every time Napri went, went forward, um, they defended well as well. I think we made we must make mention of their central defenders, Johnson and Bradshaw. The skipper, Bradshaw, eventually was given man of the match. So, you know, defended, they were well. They counter-attacked nicely. Uh, Walton and Johnson up front put Naprim under pressure and at the end of it, um, it, it was not an easy game for them. And, and it's not that they didn't play badly, Naparima. It's just I thought Speyside played well. Yeah, they did play well and give them a lot of credit. Naparima College, of course, uh, did have the opportunity to string together a few passes. But the real danger came from set plays coming That's into right. the box with Captain Joseph winning his fair share of air balls going into the box. But it must be said, this would be a disappointing result for Naparima College. At the end of the day, they had two games in hand. They mm -hmm. felt they, they could have 
uh, of course, stride up the table to challenge St. Benedict's College, who are the current leaders. Uh, that didn't happen here this afternoon. The, the, the bottom dwellers in Speyside came out with a, what you said, Colin, a plucky display to make sure they move up. Of course, this is the standings before, before the start of the round. The and, of the and, round. and look at Naprima. 11 points from six games, which means there were 11 points behind Benedict. So they needed maximum points yeah. because those two games in hand would have put them just about five points behind Benedict, but it would have given them a chance to move up the standings. But one point, really not good enough for them. Well, I think and it's it's more than just a point here for yeah. Speyside as they move from four to yep. five. But I think it really was about the performance. And Confidence. And of course, uh, 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 Liu mentioned to the man of the match, Bradshaw, how important that result is in the context. I think it was more about the performance. They can build on that as they go That's forward right. because they need those sorts of performances to get them out of the situation that they're currently in. It's all about confidence. But let's have a look at the, because our game started half an hour earlier than the other games. Let's cross over to Q Queen's Royal College to see what's happening there with the league leaders because it was one it was one all at one stage. But St. Benedict's now they've gone two one up. So they have come from a goal down and uh, they've now called scored twice against QRC and QRC another team that was in really good form and you had to think that you know if there was to be any upset here it, it would, would be here by yeah. QRC. And, and the, the minutes running down of course in Benedict's College on Monday in a game that they had to make up against St Anthony's College in a similar situation yeah. coming from a goal down and now going back going up to two goals to one as we're getting uh, of course images from Queen's Royal College ground and you'd have to think Colin with this three points possibly going on to three points that this could be St. Benedict's uh, yep. with one hand it certainly a foot could be because and certainly something more else on the trophy. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and you look at St. Benedict's and Fatima, they came from 2-1 down against Signal Hill and I, I understand they're leading 5-2 now. So it appears that both and presentation leading St. Mary's by 2-0. So it appears that that Benedict's Fatima and presentation seems to be just moving away a little bit from the rest of the pack. Yeah, certainly so. And as we wrap things up here from Lewis Street Gong in Naparima College, again, the score, Naparima College nil, Speyside nil. Wrong nine action here in Brent, the Brent, SSFL. Just one all. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to hand back over to Mariah and the lads. All right, so of course, that result won all, and Brendan Gollin Murray having a lot of fun back in Trinidad and Tobago. He says Lewis Street lands, and it brings back a lot of memories to me because I would always pass at Naprima Boys before I went to school when I went to Naprima Girls because yeah. uh, we'd have to drop off the boys to school and then the girls went after. So he says Lewis Street, and he speaks about Naprima College, and yeah. I just felt. Memories come rushing back. Yeah. But, you know, top stuff there. Um, a bit disappointed in Naprima College because back in my days, Naps boys was the thing and they'd be so dominant. Um, Space Eye, though, good job for them because, you know, they managed a draw against a team like Naprima College. And, of course, Lance, I'm just trying to rem um, to, to make the point that Speyside is coming off a 5-0 loss to Presentation College. So it's a big deal for them to be able to hold Naprima College to a one all draw. Well, Space Dive have been in the SSFL top tier since 2019. It's looking increasingly likely that they could be relegated this season. But after that draw, I'm, I'm well, wondering... Well, the fact is they've won just one of their seven matches so far and they're second from the bottom of the table. But I think they have a game in hand on several of the teams that are above them. So all is not lost for them if they can close off the second part of the season with some good results and some, and some wins they may be able to escape the relegation. But as you just mentioned, they have shown some plucky, plucky behavior in some of their recent matches. So um, let's hope that that is a, a trend that they can keep up and uh, stay in the top flight. Yeah, looking forward to see. And we can't leave Lance without talking about league leaders St. Benedict's College. They've been so hot in their rescheduled match against St. Anthony's College on Monday at West Morins. They prevailed 2-1 winners as they target their second league title in three years. So Benedict's Lance, uh, top stuff from them. They've dominated and they continue to do so. The results, the point standings on the table, they speak for themselves. Yeah, and their star player, Daryl Zoom Zoom Garcia among the goals, well, got the winner, I think, on Monday. Yeah. And uh, they, are, they are clear at the top of the standings. And uh, they have already played most of the top 
six teams in the league. So they have had their toughest matches behind them. So if they've already had that kind of um, course of, of, of match opposition and be leaders, then I think as Brent and Colin Murray just mentioned, they appear to have a stranglehold on the title this year. Yeah, waiting to see if any of the other teams can put up a fight and even cause any sort of upset. But Lance, you know, we're already midway through this season already, so we're going to have to wait and watch and see if the Benedict boys can, of course, bring this title home. Uh, do we have the... Uh, there were seven other SSFL matches. Let's take a look at the fixtures. Signal Hill versus Fatima College, Malik Secondary. They play San Juan North, Arima North versus Miracle Ministries. Presentation San Fernando. They play St. Mary's College, Queens Royal College at home to St. Benedict's College. St. Augustine Secondary. They play East Mokarapu Secondary. And Trinity College East up against St. Anthony's College. Well, tune in to the Sportsmax Zone on Thursday for an update of the results. That's a fell bitch.